All right, in this video, I wanna do three different examples of back substitution and solving for unknown variables using elementary row operations. So there's gonna be three examples. The first one's gonna be really easy. The second one is gonna involve elementary row operations. And the third one is gonna involve elementary row operations plus using a parametric representation of a solution set. So let's go ahead and get started with example one. This is gonna be very, very easy. It's gonna be x minus y is equal to three, y is equal to four, and the question asks us to use back substitution to solve for x and y are unknown variables. So this is pretty easy. We can just plug y equals four into equation one, the equation above it, and solve for x because we already know what y is, it's given. So x minus y, y is four, is equal to three. And if I add four to both sides, then I get x is equal to seven. So the solution set for this is x equals seven and y equals four. Okay, that was a warm up, right? So let's go on to example two. This is gonna be a little bit more challenging. We have a system of linear equations that is 2x1 minus 4x2 plus 6x3 is equal to eight, right? And then the second equation is 2x2 minus 2x3 is equal to one. And finally, the last equation is 3x3 is equal to nine. So this sort of looks like it's in row echelon form, right? You have this diagonal here, uh, but there are no leading ones here. But we can use an elementary row operation on equation three to solve for what x3 will be. Remember, one of our rules for elementary row operations is that we can multiply any equation by any constant other than zero. So in order to get rid of this three here, I can actually multiply equation three by one third, right? So r three times one third, and that's, this will actually get rid of this three right here, and all we will be left with is x three. So if I do this off to the side, one third times three x three is equal to one third times nine, right? When, uh, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So this three and this three cancel out, so we're left with x three on the left-hand side, and then nine divided by three is going to be three. So we got our first variable, x three is equal to three. Now, although this system of linear equations is not in row echelon form, we can still use back substitution to solve for the other two variables, x one and x two. So if I plug in x three is equal to three into this second equation, which I will do up here, then I'm gonna get two x two minus two x three, which is three, is equal to one. Well, two x two minus six is equal to one. And if I add six to both sides, then I get two x two is equal to seven. And if I divide by two on both sides, I get x two is equal to seven over two. So we just solved for our second unknown variable, x two. So now we have x three and we have x two. We can plug both of these values into the first equation here and solve for x1, so let's do that. Two times x1 minus four times x2, which is seven over two, plus six times x3, which is three, is equal to eight, right? So I'm gonna scroll down a bit to make a little bit more room. And if we rewrite this, this is gonna be two x one minus, well, four times seven over two is 14, right? So because four divided by two is two, two times seven is 14, or 28 divided by two is 14, plus six times three is 18, and that's equal to eight. And then negative 14 and 18, if we add those two together, we're left with positive four. So we have two x one plus four is equal to eight. And if I subtract four from both sides, I get two x one is equal to four. And if I divide by two on both sides, I get x1 is equal to two. So there we go. The solution set for this system of linear equations is x1 is equal to two, x3 is equal to three, and x2 is equal to seven over two. Great, so let's move on to our last example, which is gonna be the most challenging. So I'm gonna write example three. And this one, we're gonna have to use a parametric representation of a solution set. So we have our system of linear equations, 5x plus 2y plus z is equal to zero. And then 2x plus y 
is equal to 0, right? So you'll notice that we have two equations, but we have three unknown variables. So in this kind of a situation, we can actually use a parametric representation of a solution set to solve. So the very first thing I want to do is actually take the second equation and multiply it by 1 half. So r2 times 1 half, right? And this is going to yield, well, if I do 2x times 1 half plus one half times y, and that's equal to, well, one half times zero is zero. I'm gonna be left with x plus y over two is equal to zero. So now I wanna manipulate the first equation or the first row, and I'm gonna use another elementary row operation. Row one plus negative five times r2 is going to be our new row one. So row one is 5x plus 2y plus z is equal to zero. And negative five times r2, and remember our new r2 is this equation right here. This is r2. If I take negative five and I multiply it with this equation, I'm gonna get negative five x minus five over two times y is equal to zero. So coming back over here, I'm gonna add that equation to our first equation, r1, or equation one, five x plus two y plus z is equal to zero. So minus five x minus five over two times y is equal to zero. So now you can see why I multiplied by negative five here, right? And that's because once I add these two equations, this and this are going to cancel out. So we're just left with zero. And then we have 2y plus negative 5 over 2y, going to be negative 1 half times y. And then we have z plus 0, which is positive z. And this is equal to 0. So this equation right here is our new r1. And this one right here was r2. So the new system of linear equations is negative 1 half y plus z is equal to 0. And that was r1 here, and then r2 is going to be x plus y over 2 is equal to 0, right? This equation right there. So now if I scroll down a bit and we just look at this new system of linear equations here, we notice that we still have three unknown variables, x, y, and z, and we only have two equations. So we'll have to represent the solution set parametrically. And remember, we can choose parameters for unknown variables to represent any real number. So if I said, let z equal t, the parameter t to just represent any real number, then from the first equation, which is equation one right here, I'll get negative one half y plus z, which is t, is equal to zero. And if I add one half y to both sides, I'll get t is equal to one half y. And if I solve for y, I get two t is equal to y. So z is equal to t, y is equal to two t, and I can use these two variables, plug them into the second equation, and we can solve for x. So for the second equation, we have x plus y over two. Well, y was two t, right? right here. That's divided by two and that's equal to zero. Well, two divided by two is just one, right? So x plus t is equal to zero. And if I solve for x, x is gonna be equal to negative t. So there we go. The parametric representation of a solution set for this system of linear equations. It is x equals negative t, y equals two t, and z equals t.